Good morning and welcome to the 2016 Measures Under Consideration kickoff stakeholder meeting. All lines have been muted upon entry to prevent any background disturbance. We will be conducting a Q&A session at the end of this call and at that time instructions will be given. This meeting is being recorded and then subsequently uploaded to the CMS website for future viewing. Thank you. All right, good morning everyone. My name is Michelle Jeppe and I'm CMS's Measures Under, Con Measures Under Consideration Coordinator. I work in the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality in the Quality Measurement and Value-Based Incentives Group. Today's meeting is the second in a series of four meetings occurring over a two-week period. Each session's content varies a bit so as not to be repetitive. As our moderator had said, all audience lines will be muted and today's session is being recorded for training purposes. Later on in the presentation, we are going to invite folks to raise their hand via the webinar to ask questions. All right, if we could move to the agenda slide, please. All right, this is just an overview of the topics that are going to be covered today. I'm here with Manette, and she's going to go over some new requirements related to MIPS journal articles. Um, and now we're going to just move quickly into reviewing some guidelines for proposing measures. All right, by program, a measure only has to go on the list once to be considered for rulemaking. The caveats are, if a measure has been on the list before but is now being considered for a different program, it needs to go back on the list. Or if a measure has a substantive change in terms of measure intent, designated setting, data source change, level of analysis change, or adding or removing a measure from rulemaking, the measure would need to go back on the list again. Uh, more information is going to be available to you with regard to this uh, particular item uh, when the recording is available from Tuesday. Uh, this is a topic that we covered earlier in the week. All right, next slide, please. Right. So for the first time in pre-rulemaking history, CMS expanded the time frame to accept new candidate measures by an extra three months. So beginning January 29th through July 15th, measure submitters now have more time to enter their measures for consideration. What's not represented here but wanted to quickly mention, next Tuesday CMS is going to be hosting our needs and priority setting webinar to educate our stakeholders about program needs and priorities should actually already have this appointment on your calendar. If not, feel free to reach out to me and I can send you the appointment. Also, the May 2nd date not only reflects our official kickoff to the measures under consideration season, but it also reflects the date that uh, those that have submitted their measures um, no longer will be able to edit them uh, by themselves online. Instead, you'll need to submit a request via JIRA using the uh, modify candidate request issue type. August 4th represents our federal only stakeholder meeting. At this meeting it will be critical for CMS to learn of any federal stakeholder objections uh, to avoid after clearance changes. The ultimate goal of the August 4th federal stakeholder meeting is to seek approval of the proposed measures prior to the commencement of clearance. It actually starts to occur on August 22nd. As of this date, the list will start making its rounds through the various CMS components, HHS agencies, and then on to OMB. These same groups should be present at the August 4th Federal Stakeholder Meeting. CMS does strive for a clean, transparent clearance process for all stakeholders involved, and we recognize that if clearance starts any later than August, we are at risk of not meeting our statutory mandate. For a complete list of uh, events, meetings, and so much more, please visit the pre-rulemaking website uh, that's located at the end of the slide deck on the next, uh, under next steps. So now I'd like to turn it over to Manette, who's going to talk to us about journal article requirement for MIPS. Great. Thanks, Michelle, and good morning, everyone. Um, so for those of you who will be submitting for the MIPS um, program this year, uh, this requirement will affect you. So the first slide just shows where in the rule, in the macro rule, where we are now 
the, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services now to submit to an applicable specialty appropriate peer review journal potential new measures before including such measures in the final list of annual CQMs under MIPS. Um, informational should include the method for developing and selecting such measures, including clinical and other data supporting measure. And in a couple slides, I will have a, um, uh, the template that we are asking for you to complete as well as a sample. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, so the benefits of this requirement um, is that we are now um, giving access and the theme of transparency to those clinicians who otherwise are not involved or do not have access to the MUC or MAP process. Um, eligible professionals will be more aware of the types of quality measures that can be reported to CMS quality programs. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the template I was referring to. Um, so if you click on that um, and you will find um, the information and if you scroll down to the, through the page, uh, it will give you the general information that we are looking for. So we will, uh, from the measure owners and developers, and um, uh, this is the information that CMS will be submitting as part of that journal. And, um, and the sample that we provided as well will hopefully help you, um, you know, complete this form. And Vince will walk you through where on JIRA you will be able to attach this, um, this template as well. Um, so I guess we can go back to the slide presentation. And again, this is just for those who are submitting for MIPS, which would be measures for the ambulatory setting. And also, it does not include QCDRs, and it also does not include any measures that are already in the PKRS or Meaningful Use programs. And this will be the standardized process from this point forward. Um, we may be changing, you know, tweaking it, a, uh, you know, on a yearly basis, but we will let you know about that as well. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Annette. And now, now I'd like to turn it over to Vince Brown with Vitell. He is going to walk us through what's new for 2016 in JIRA. So Vince, take it away. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. Uh, this is Vince Brown from Vitell. We are a contractor to CMS, and we help uh, manage the measures program. And we're more data people than clinical people, and what we do is uh, – check the measures as they come in and keep everything in order and moving toward their publication. Um, my talk will, will go through some slides that have to do with what's new for this year. Uh, some of it will look familiar to those of you who were on JIRA in 2015, uh, but there are some new additions this year that we'll cover. And then we'll switch over and do a live screen demonstration of some of the features and some of the things that users have told us they found most helpful in prior years. Uh, we do want to leave ample time for questions and answers that Michelle or I or others will try to answer as best we can on the call um, here in a few minutes. So uh, as Michelle noted, JIRA did open uh, quite a bit earlier this year. Um, the interface has about the same number of fields as it did last year. Um, the one big difference you'll notice is that some of the uh, performer programs are combined into MIPS this year. Um, you do have more room for your measure description field. I covered this, I think, on the Tuesday call for those of you who are on the kickoff. Um, again, uh, we put a lot more screen guidance on, particularly in the case when a measure is being submitted this year that has already been through the MAP process. We want to make sure that uh, if, it's, if the same measure is being resubmitted, that we understand what, uh, you know, what was its history with the MAP in prior years, how has it changed, and uh, that's really helpful to the, the MAP committees as they make their decisions uh, after December 1st. And then also there's a note, you'll see it on the screen guidance in JIRA about the borrowing of some measures from one program to another. Um, a big change this year is that users, uh, after you submit a measure, a new candidate measure into JIRA, you have until May 2nd to go back in and edit that, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute on the live screen. Um, always before, if you needed to change a measure once you had submitted it, you needed to uh, 
create a new issue in JIRA and basically formally request to change that. Uh, we'll go over that briefly. But this year, you can edit your own measures live until uh, May 2nd. Um, again, uh, one thing that we're asking everyone to do is once you, you know that you're finished editing that, there's a button at the bottom, which is you can see on your screen there now, that says finished editing, yes or no. So once you are finished edit, we would ask you to please click that yes button. That helps us to uh, even out our workflow of measures going through the review process. It goes through several layers of review at CMS. So uh, again, we'll demonstrate this here in a minute. Um, I'll just point out, uh, recap some of the things we covered Tuesday uh, real briefly. Uh, many of our drop-down lists are quite long to give you a lot of choices, things like measure steward or registry. Um, so scroll down if you don't see your, um, if you don't see the entry you're looking for, then uh, you can, uh, sometimes you can start typing in there and it will pop up. Um, if you select other, we're asking you to please use the comments box at the bottom of your measure record to type in what the other is to specify the value that you want uh, to be in the database. This again will help the, the map and other stakeholders to see uh, what information you meant to put in there if it was not on our pre-filled drop-down list. Uh, we do ask you to limit the measure title field to 255 characters. And uh, you'll see on JIRA, the fields that are required have a red asterisk on your interface. Um, if you don't have the information, we ask you to put NA in there uh, just for consistency. It helps when we're screening and looking at large numbers of measures. And if you do uh, click through and leave that blank, JIRA will not accept that measure. So you have to put something in all those required fields. So uh, NA just helps for consistency's sake. Um, one of the things we'll demonstrate here in a minute is for, especially for those of you who are looking across at, at large numbers of measures, or you want to focus on the measures associated with just one program or one area of specialty, for example, uh, JIRA does offer some very flexible uh, built-in features for filtering and screening and sorting and displaying and downloading these measures as you go. So all JIRA users have access to this, and we will uh, we'll demonstrate that uh, briefly here in a minute. Likewise, if you find yourself doing the same kind of search over and over, JIRA lets you set up your own dashboard. And basically what the dashboard does is it lets you put these filters in a handy screen so that then you can uh, see every day when you log in or every week, however you need to check these certain um, sets of measures you can quickly uh, run your filter, uh, it's already there. And so it shows up a lot more quickly. You don't have to you know, click and choose and, and search and sort again and again. You just leave it in the dashboard and then the dashboard automatically refreshes itself every time you log in. So that's a, that's a nice feature that uh, people have appreciated. Again, um, just to discuss the self-editing feature, um, you, edit, you can only edit your own. You can view all the measures that are in there, but you can only edit your own. And this is available until between now and May 2nd. After May 2nd, uh, between then and July 15th, you still have the option to request a change for a measure. It just needs to go through a, a CMS review so that the program officials um, who are watching that measure and others like it can decide whether to make the change that you're asking for. Um, as I pointed out on Tuesday's call, sometimes we will see for the same measure, uh, two, three, or more comments will come in and request for changes that sometimes uh, uh, diverge. And so this lets us reconcile those changes offline and uh, it keeps the database in a, um, going along a lot better. So that's what will happen between May 2nd and July 15th. To emphasize, you do have until July 15th to add new measures. You can add new measures any time up until then. And the reason that we, we wanted to add this self-editing feature, it was a popular request last year and in prior years. And again, uh, it allows a better, it allows CMS reviewers to um, move them through the workflow more efficiently. Uh, so I'm going to switch now to share screen and we'll show you some JIRA uh, features. 
So I'm already in the uh, 2016 uh, JIRA interface. And Michelle, uh, Jeppy, I hope if I uh, miss something that you'll chime in here, feel free as we go through this um, to remind me of what, uh, what we ought to be demonstrating. But for those of you who are not on the call Tuesday, um, this is uh, a typical measure record for 2016. And uh, you can see the different specifications. The questions are here down the left. What is the background or history? Numerator, denominator, exclusions, et cetera, the usual specification fields. Um, and so this shows what the submitter has already put in the database. And so this way you can quickly skim and see, you'll notice that this reviewer or this submitter has already put one attachment on there. It's a, it's a Word document. And uh, so there's an attachment of supporting information, which you can upload up to 10 megabytes there if you need to. Um, so this is the way you can quickly skim through. And then if your job, if you're, if you're part of CMS and your job is to review measures, you'll have buttons on here that say accept, reject, and other uh, actions that move this measure through the workflow, the first and second level reviews, and so on and so forth. Um, the edit button is the new one this year. And I'll just point out a difference between the, the view that I, we're on right now and when I go to that edit window, um, once a measure has been submitted, this uh, first screen that pops up right here that I'm looking at and scrolling through, that shows you only the fields that have information in them. Uh, there are required fields and there are non-required fields in JIRA. So if you left a field blank because it was not required, uh, it doesn't show up on this view. The way that you would see that is by going to this edit button in the upper left corner. I'll click it right now. You'll see a new window come open. And what this shows you is every field in JIRA, even the blank ones. So, and this is where you can see the red asterisk that indicates a required field. I'm not actually going to change this record, but if you wanted to edit it, you could go into any of these fields and modify the values as you see fit, assuming it was your measure to begin with and assuming it's before May the 2nd. Um, and so this shows, uh, what state of development, the setting it was tested in, all the specifications that are useful to CMS and the MAP committees as they evaluate these measures and decide uh, which final recommendations to make next February. Um, as Minette pointed out, uh, when you get to the bottom of your form, here are comments fields. And then this button right here says choose, choose files. This is the attachment field. So if you want to attach uh, a file to support, such as a measure information form or these MIPS requests relating to peer-reviewed journal publication, uh, this would be the place to do that. And that way, that document will travel along with this measure as it moves through the review and uh, recommendation process. So that's how you do that right here. Just choose files. A, a window pops up, and you can browse, uh, browse wherever your storage is to append that file. Then. Uh, Here's the all important finished editing button that is new this year. And so there again, that will stay as no until you click yes. And this is a, a, a request that we're making of all submitters is that once you know you're finished editing that measure, please click that yes button and that will be a signal to us that that measure is ready to start through the workflow. It keeps, uh, you know, if we have 100 or 200 measures all crashing in here in uh, May, June, July, it would be nice to get a few of them out of the way early. So that's uh, the purpose of that. Then when you are finished editing, uh, you would click the update button, or if you change your mind, you always click cancel to back out. So um, that's, uh, that's how that works. I want to switch over uh, for a couple minutes here to the 2015 project. And you do that at the top under projects if you want, for example, let's say you're working on a new measure, but you want to go back and see something that happened in 2015. Uh, here you can go if you have access. And the reason that I want to sh use the 2015 for illustration purposes only is that thus far we have uh, just the one measure in 2016. And so the tables are not very impressive uh, with one measure in there. 
So as for illustration purposes, we're uh, going backward in time to use the 2015 database just because it has more, um, more content to it. So um, I wanted to show then uh, the idea of filtering. <clears throat> Excuse me. And once you're, at, once you're on the home page for JIRA, you go over here to Issues. And one of the quick things that a lot of people will ask is, I want to see all the measures for my program. So if you scroll down on the Issues screen, you can see it's called Unresolved by Component. Component is a word that JIRA uses uh, to represent a CMS program. It's, uh, we've asked JIRA folks to change that, and they can't. It has to be component, so we just live with it. Um, but let's say you want to look at hospital inpatient measure records. I'm going to click that hyperlink, and it will load. And at the top, you can see there are 22 such measures. So this was last year we're looking at. <clears throat> so you can go through there and click and open any of these. Um, and you see them displayed. And then uh, you can also um, apply filters to that. Let's say we want to look at only the hospital inpatient records that have to do with diabetes. So I'm going to type in this search box, diabetes, and we'll see what happens. I didn't try this offline, so I picked a bad, uh, a bad example. Let's try heart. Out of those records from hospital inpatient, three measures from last year contain the word heart. That word can appear anywhere in the, in the record. So that can be in the title, description, numerator, denominator, exclusions. If the, if the text string heart is in there, it's going to hit. And so now I see all the measures having to do with heart. Um, I can always take that filter off by deleting it. And I can change this. We filtered it down to the hospital inpatient. So if I click X, now I'm going to see all these records again. Um, let's say I wanted to search by another field, such as area of specialty. So I'm going here where it says more. And I'm going to search for uh, area of specialty. I just start typing the word I want and here, what area of specialty best fits. I'm going to click that, and that's going to apply that as a new filter. Now, within the area of specialty, I need to pick my uh, area to filter on. So I want to pick general surgery, and we'll see what happens here. So again, looking across all programs, we've got one from hospital outpatient and one from inpatient. I've got two measures from last year that deal with the area of specialty general surgery. You can search on any, any of the fields in JIRA uh, by any of the drop-down criteria. And so you can zoom in on exactly the measures you're looking for here. Um, as far as screen display, the way you would do that is here at the right where it says columns. And so if you wanted area of specialty to show up on your screen as you're viewing it, uh, I'm going to type specialty here and check that. Now I'm done. Now this, it got wider than the screen is, but you can see over here what area of specialty best fits this. Now you can view that and uh, verify if you want several different areas of specialty, for example. So you can add and delete those columns. Uh, however you want to help your, make your screen display look better. Once you get a view looking the way that you do, uh, you can export this to Excel. Uh, I do this every day when JIRA is, is moving fast. And uh, so what you would do is come up here to the Export button. And uh, I usually get the screen set up the way I want it and then click Excel Current Fields. I won't click it now because it takes us to different screens. But this works very nicely to, uh, to export into Excel, and then you can sort, select, and, and print, or do whatever you want uh, with that data. Again, it's taking a snapshot of it that day. It'll be different. It was different yesterday. It will be different tomorrow. But as of the day you export, there it is. 
and that's a handy way to get all the measure records in one place if you need to move them around or show someone something or do some analysis on them. Um, let's see, I wanted to illustrate the dashboard real quickly. Um, the feature here, uh, to, to set up your own dashboard, I won't walk you through the whole process, but the general idea is up at the top it says dashboards. Again, we're in 2015. You go to Manage Dashboards. I've set a few test, uh, test ones here, but what you would do is create new dashboard. You click that button there, and it walks you through. You have to give it a title. You, you tell it which filters you want to put in there. And uh, basically, once you've created a filter, then you get it the way you want it. Then what, the way you do it in Jira is you save that, and, and it becomes one of your favorite filters. And what you can do then is put one, two, or more of these favorite filters onto the dashboard. So when you go to that dashboard, I'm seeing, ah, I want to look at hospital inpatient and MIPS. So here's my inpatient list, here's my MIPS list. And, and you can look at them very quickly, see what's new, see what's changed, what's happening. So that's the way, um, that's the way that feature works. Um, I think that's about all I had, Michelle, as far as the demonstration. Um, glad to pass it back to you if you want to moderate or Anne-Marie to moderate the Q&A. Hi, Vince. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically, I just want to mention quickly some changes over last year in terms of programs. Um, so in, in JIRA, we removed Hospital Compare, and Vince, maybe if you could go back to JIRA and, and sort of just show folks in the Create Issue um, data field where, where I'm speaking about. Thank Just you. Give me a second. Sure. <clears throat> All right, so when folks are creating a new issue in JIRA, they're going to see a change over last year in the 2016 project. Um, the, the data field that Vince is in currently. Uh, hospital Compare, we, we removed as a program, and the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System now replaces uh, PQRS, Medicare, and Medicaid EHR incentive program for eligible professionals, Physician Compare, Physician Feedback QRUR, and Physician Value-Based uh, pay Payment Modifier. So those five programs were removed and replaced with um, MIPS that you'll see there that Vince has highlighted. So um, to Vince's earlier point, too, I just want to mention, to date, we have one new measure in JIRA. Um, JIRA was opened on January 29th and is going to be open through July 15th, which is definitely a hard stop date um, because at that point we have to start preparing our muck list for our federal-only stakeholder meeting that happens on August Fourth. So I definitely encourage everyone out there to, to get their measures in so that we can avoid crunch time later and give our CMS uh, staff, uh, you know, more time to review and, and quality check the measures and so forth. So that, that's all I really had. I think, um, Anne-Marie, if we could open it up for questions at this point, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Vince. Sure. If you would like to ask a question or make a comment at this time, please activate the raise hand feature, which is um, a, actually a hand that is at the bottom right of your screen. Once you use the raise hand feature, I will unmute your line. Again, please utilize the raise hand feature to ask your question. I do see we have a user who has activated the raise hand feature, Deborah, but unfortunately Deborah has not connected her name to the online portion, I mean her um, phone line to the online portion of this meeting, so I cannot unmute her. All right, so Deborah, um, if you would like to send a message to me via email, um, we can address it at that point. Sorry about that, that is a um, drawback, I guess, of the webinar uh, application, unless you are uh, 
using the audio portion through the webinar, you, you can't um, ask a question verbally. Marlene has a question. Marlene, I'm, I'm going to unmute your line. Marlene, when you're ready. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Hi. Oh, hi. Sorry, I was on mute talking to myself. Thanks okay. uh, for today's presentation and the presentation the other day. Uh, can you just clarify the difference between the May 2nd and the May 15th deadline dates? I, I get that the May 2nd is the last day that you can edit something in JIRA, but then the 15th is of July is the last day you can actually add a measure. So can you just talk about the difference between those two? Yeah, so May 2nd is the official kickoff of the measures under consideration season. So up through May 2nd, folks that enter a measure in JIRA, submitters or reporters, they can actually edit their own measures through that date. After May 2nd, um, any measure that's been put into JIRA, CMS is going to check it off that it's finished, and then we're going to start moving it through the review and uh, approval um, process. Um, for that particular measure, review, um, disapproval process, and so forth. So does that answer your question, Marlene, or really? <laughs> so I'm aiming to get everything done by May 2nd, because that seems like, to me, the more obvious deadline. But let's say that I magically come up with another measure and I start entering it on May 3rd. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. You actually have until July 15th to enter measures. That is the hard stop date to enter new measures into JIRA. What really changes between or before May 2nd and May 2nd through July 15th is that you just can't edit your own measure. That's it. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We have another question from Jennifer. Jennifer Frank, I'm going to unmute your line. Go ahead when you're ready, Jennifer. Hi, thank you. Uh, Hi there. Hi, and, and thank you for um, this open forum today. Um, sure. I, I wanted to ask about a substantive versus non-substantive change, which was touched on on Tuesday. Um, the question we had was, um, for example, if measure specifications were amended such that we used the same data source, but we're looking at different assessment items or additional items on that same data source, would that constitute a substantive change such that it needed to go back on or needed to go onto the muck list? Okay. What I would recommend with regard to what you think is the potential substantive change is to go ahead and put that in writing, an email to me, and I can forward it on to the person that's sort of leading that uh, discussion and, and initiative. So if you can email it to me, that would be wonderful. My email information is located at the end of the slide, and then you should also have it if you receive this appointment. Great. Thanks very much. Sure. No problem. Any other questions from folks? Again, if you would like to ask a question at this time or make a comment, please activate the raise hand feature. Michelle, I don't see any other raise hand features at this time. Okay. All right. Well, thank you um, for moderating that. Amory, much appreciated. And at this point, if we could move to the next step slide. All right. So the next meeting that we're having in this series of four, the third meeting is going to occur on next Tuesday, which is April 12th from 10 to noon. And during this session, we are going to have all of our CMS program leads. Um, reviewing the needs and priorities for the 2016 Measures Under Consideration season. Uh, following that meeting on Thursday, the same time, April 14th, we're going to have another open forum just like this. So anyway, that I think will do it for today.
um, we appreciate everyone's time and attention this morning, and um, that, that'll be a wrap. <laughs>